Welcome. Uh, we've been working on PGO at MediaTek and trying to better uh, improve the metrics for evaluating that. So to start off, the PGO process tries to take runtime information to make better optimization decisions. And to do that, if it has more accurate information, it's generally going to make better or better uh, optimizations. However, the profile and runtime information takes a lot of forms within the compiler, and it goes through transformations, adjustments as the CFG changes, and that's a lot of area for inaccuracies to get introduced. So our goal has been to try to create those metrics to judge this. This will kind of help with tracking um, regressions and also evaluating improvements, and if possible, even directing bug finding and possibly feature creation. Now, an overview of what the information in the compiler looks like. This mainly takes the form of metadata. There's the prof labels uh, in the regular IR. This has function entry counts as well as branch weights. This sort of information is used to derive the branch probability info analysis and block information. Um, that's the analyses pass is what the optimizations are going to generally use, but they do have to go back and sometimes adjust these weights on CFG changes. Once it gets lowered down into MIR, this takes the form of successor probabilities as well as some of the profile summaries uh, continued per assist. So this is what we're trying to judge the accuracy of. What sort of existing metrics might we have? There's performance that's pretty common on any sort of benchmark. You'll be able to run it on really any compilation. However, there's a potential of noise. Very small changes to PGO may lead to um, being overshadowed by something just like regular OS scheduling or even binary layout. So we can't always tell if the change is actually making an effect, as well as the correlation of the actual accuracy. Since a lot of stuff within the compiler is very tuned, if you suddenly change the accuracy of the information, you may have to go back and actually retune that. Another sort of metric we saw with papers is import quality. This is a notion of at the time after loading in the profile, comparing it against some sort of ground truth. Some papers compared ML against a sample PGO profile, while um, Profi compared sample PGO against instrumentation as its ground truth. This does avoid that noise and provides a better accuracy um, measurement, although only at the time of import, so you don't really see later in the compilation process. But uh, one of the downsides is there's a normalization step, and that's going to possibly limit you if you need inlining. It tends to need to disable that to get the uh, comparisons to line up. Then with another possible metric is just unit tests. This does avoid noise. However, due to its very case-by-case -case nature, it's hard to kind of find problems that you didn't know about in the first place or weren't already covered. So can we do better? Uh, what we're proposing is cross-checking that um, the PGO ana analysis passes against runtime information at the end of compilation. To do this, we've modified the back end to emit these analyses into the ELF. So far, we've only focused on branch probabilities, but there's also block weights and other things that could be encoded there. And then at the same time, we need to get some sort of runtime trace that's accurate for that comparison. We've been able to use Pentool uh, on x86 to collect things, but it's also possible to use an emulator, simulator, or other sorts of tracing tools. That comes together to generate those sorts of metrics and try to provide us the information we're evaluating. So what are those metrics? Um, the first one is the notion of branch direction match. This um, is the idea that if something is taken more often in execution, you would hope that the compiler predicts the probability being higher, and vice versa, if it's not taken, the probability would be lower. This value is based on the jumping edge of a conditional branch, and so if you see a jump and it takes the target, that's where the um, probability is derived from. There is the special case of what to do about 50%. We found that to avoid skewing the final overall metrics, it's better to just treat it as an exact, as leaning it one way or the other tends to bias things. This gives us individual branch information that can be sometimes a helpful um, artifact. And then as an overall metric, we tend to weight by actual execution counts. That way, hot code gets a priority and cold code is kind of pushed down as oftentimes improving the cold code is not going to give us that much of the benefit. 
that really gave us a notion of accuracy, but we still need some sort of precision. This is where um, branch probability error comes in. It's a simple weighted average of squared error. Again, weighted for the dynamic execution so that we're able to bias the hot code that we're trying to optimize. This um, helps us where if you have a 55% probability and a 95% um, taken percent, that's a pretty big difference, although it does still match. In the 95% case, you might want to make more aggressive optimizations, even outlining. So this is where the um, error comes in to tell us how close we are on target. This is primarily more of an overall metric, though. So where do these metrics fit in before? Um, one of the benefits, we solve the full realistic compilations. This allows us to compile things um, only needing an extra backend flag so we can compare any sorts of inlining flags. We've also tested with various levels of optimizations. Um, it also avoids the noise that you might get from performance as it's only relying on the actual deterministic execution. And then finally, the indication of branch accuracy and PGO accuracy. This is better as we get a bigger view of the compiler judging it at the end. So this will try to help um, catch some of those errors that might happen later. With these, um, we've been able to run them on benchmarks. Uh, we've used uh, sample PGO on four LLVM test suite benchmarks compiled with re uh, release thin LTO and comparing it against just a default compilation. And as you can see, by default, the sample PGO is going to give a noticeable boost in direction match and also bring down the probability error. As we kind of continue forward, we would hope that these uh, levels stay either the same or go up. If you suddenly see a noticeable drop in these, there might be a bug that was introduced and something that would need to get fixed. At um, MediaTek, we are a primarily use uh, sample PGO. And so this is what we've tried to improve and break down into zones for improvements. The first major area is the debug information and sample compilation is directly tied to generating a profile. So it needs to be accurate in order to get a better profile. The next stage with profile loading is uh, where a lot of the complexity is in converting the profile, loading it, and then mapping it onto the CFG. There's been a lot of notable features in the community here, and there's a lot of gain to happen. Um, and then lastly, the PGO metadata usage. This is where optimization passes, try to use it, manipulate it, and then also if it needs to adjust it or it needs to keep things around when it might accidentally delete things. With this, we've been able to use some of the metrics and provide gains uh, in our backend. So one is with debug information handling. This, uh, there's a guide. And it suggests when you hoist code from a loop, you should also drop the location as that might uh, skew how the profile gets generated. When we implemented this, we didn't really see a performance change. And it was hard to tell if that was a benefit. However, with the accuracy metrics, we are able to see the minor bump in accuracy improvements and validate that this was a beneficial change. Another area where we were actually able to detect an issue is with constant iteration loops. So by investigating some of the patterns in individual uh, direction match, we were able to see that sometimes um, just due to regular sampling errors, there's a lot of uh, inaccuracy that's introduced when mapping since it's an imperfect process. But sometimes those loops we can detect at compile time with scalar evolution. So we have experimented with uh, adjusting that. And for us, we optimize with size, and we've seen a bit of benefit there. So in conclusion, we feel that these metrics can provide um, better evaluation and tracking and overall improve the uh, workflow to try to integrate PGO more. For next steps, we currently have an RFC up on discourse, as well as we're planning on incorporating block frequency info into the metrics to get a better view of straight line code where you don't have the control flow to judge branches. Uh, thank you. We'll be around after the conference to see if anyone has uh, questions after this. Oh. Thank you, Micah. Great talk. I have a, one question. I was wondering if there is a way to expose this information to the user. And the use case I'm thinking of is informing the users if they got the 
compiler optimizations annotations, right? In particular, our branch unlikely or branch likely C++ attributes, because it looks likely to be very useful. Mm -hmm. um, it could be possible, definitely. Uh, it, it, our plan in the RFC is to admit it um, as part of the ELF and have it consumable through tools like read ELF for object dump. Um, as long as there's a way to kind of map that back, um, and we already are mapping it against runtime traces, uh, it would be more of a matter of seeing uh, if you can get the information of where it originated and if there's the annotation there. But it's definitely a reasonable use right. case. Yes, yes, thank you. I have one question. Yep. Did it help performance? Um, some of these, uh, yes. We were able to kind of narrow some of the improvements on our internal benchmarks. Um, there is some cases where like, the accuracy bump might needed more tuning. Uh, I think with some of the constant iteration loops, there is a bit more experimentation there. But for the debug information, we were able to get tiny boosts in our um, simulator. Yep. More questions? And one more question. So mm -hmm. sometimes we want to profile for cold code. Will this help to be more precise with finding cold, like zero executed, so mm -hmm. we can put them away? Um, potentially, there is. Um, at the moment, it's kind of hard to judge the cold code as it's not going to, if it never runs, it won't show up in the execution trace. It's, if it's run minimally, you could reasonably um, go through some of the CSVs uh, we generate, at least with the scripts we've had. Um, it generates the CSV. So if you have some notion of any code that's ran fewer than 100 times, you could sort for that and try to consume it and possibly investigate there. Mm -hmm. There is no more question. Thank you. Thank you, Micah.